Hi there, it's Tim G5TM. Welcome. I've just put up an antenna I've been meaning to put up for ages in my garden. And uh, this is a 40 metre dipole. Now, 40 metres is a nice choice for anyone, really, especially if you're new to HF, new to the hobby, and you're thinking of putting up your first antenna at home. 40 metres is a nice band. It's nearly always open somewhere. There's nearly always somebody on 40 metres. It's hardly ever completely closed. In the day, you get some more regional contacts. In the evening, maybe some longer ones. But um, a dipole for 40 metres doesn't have to be up very high for you to enjoy good coverage for around 1,000 to 2,000 miles or so. And uh, when 40 opens, you usually get a lot of uh, short skip coming in as well. So it's a great band to choose. And the dipole is a great antenna for your first antenna, for any garden, in fact. Um, my dipole is about 3S points quieter on, on in terms of the noise floor than, than the vertical would be, for example. So uh, that's one good, good uh, reason to choose it as well. The other thing as well with dipoles, I've got mine as an inverted V. So that shape, rather than the flat top, it's like that, which means I can squeeze it in. I've squeezed it into a basically a horizontal space, which is about half the size of the antenna itself. So what is then is a 40 meter dipole? Okay, so what is an inverted V dipole? Well, you can see from the picture, it basically looks like an inverted V, funnily enough. Uh, you can see it's fed at the apex there, and the legs sort of bend down towards well towards the ground but they shouldn't really touch the ground the the ends of both legs the the bottom end should be above head height and i'll explain what i've done with mine in a moment the angle between both legs at the apex there where the antenna is fed by the coax should be at least 90 degrees you could probably get away with 80 degrees or so but not less than that uh, because you'll tend to find that you get some cancellation and issues with tuning etc and the swr bandwidth becomes a lot narrower as well so uh, anything from 90 degrees up to the flat top 180 is what a dipole really looks like. Now mine is just about at about 80, I worked up at about 88 degrees. So it's basically as good as 90 degrees. I'm absolutely fine with that. In terms of the length, well for 40 meters, we're looking at seven megahertz, of course. So for meters, it's gonna be just around 20 meters for that. It's 141 divided by the frequency. And for feet, it's 468 divided by the frequency. That works out to 66 feet. So two 33 foot legs and two 10 meter legs. What are the ingredients then for this, uh, this dipole? Well, the, the first thing I had to get was a dipole center and uh, something to hold the, the, the wire and connect it to the, uh, to the coax itself. So I got one from a place called Ham Goodies in the UK. I'll leave a link down below. As you can see, it's this yellow um, sort of plastic, they've cut pre-cut plastic um, with pre-drilled holes too for I think M6 sort of uh, little bolts and nuts as well to be used. And uh, they also supply with some connectors as well, which you can use, but you can get some of your own too. That's nice and easy to use. Now, you'll also notice I've got there uh, a little ballon. Now, I used a 140-43 toroid, uh, around which I wound uh, about eight turns of RG174. Um, you can see from this drawing how to do that. It's actually the middle one of the three there that I used. And that's the way I did that. And that's there just to, just to hopefully prevent some common mode coming back down the coax. Um, probably best actually to weatherproof the ballon. You can uh, put some self amalgamating tape or some heat shrink on it, or you can get obviously uh, an off the shelf ballon as well. Now, I've gone for this approach because, or uh, to keep it lightweight, because I'm using a fiberglass pole to support the center of the inverted V. The uh, pole itself is fiberglass, as I've just said, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's hollow. It's actually from Wind Jammer. You get others as well. I've used the uh, the 10 meter version, but just the first eight sections, the bottom eight sections. So the top of it isn't too flimsy and it's strong enough to hold the, uh, the center as it is. The wire I use, by the way, the green wire is from uh, Soda Beams. Um, really thin stuff, uh, about 26 gauge. So ideal for portable, by the way, and also for any sort of low profile wire. Uh, you get a lot, I can't remember how much it is, but you get an awful lot for the, uh, the amount you pay for it. And it's nice stuff to work with too. Uh, the coax I've used, as you can tell, is pretty thin as well. It's RG174. I know some people think that's a bit too thin, but for seven megahertz, 40 meters, there's only about 1.5 dB loss in the 50 foot run I've got. So it's 15 meters of it that's absolutely fine by me to be honest you can see it's terminated with the bnc so i've got a bnc 
uh, I got an adapter to turn up the, from BNC mail to SO239 and I can just plug in any extra coax I want to on the end of that as well. So I got but literally got about a 20 centimetre run of RG58 right in the shack just to put into the back of the uh, into the radio there. Little, little patch lead. Um, so there we are. That's what it looks like in terms of the ingredients. Let's see what it looks like now in terms of being up in the air. Here's the antenna up in the sky. <laughs> There's the apex of the pole, about 8 metres, about 25 feet above the ground. That leg is coming down to a pole about 3 metres off the ground. That's 10 feet. Down to fence level and then back out a little bit towards us for about a metre and a half or so to an orange insulator, which you can see there, which separates the antenna from the paracord. The paracord is tied off to the fence. And we'll go back up in a second to the other leg. That comes down to that tree. There's a pole in that tree, which we'll see in a second which is about 12 or 13 feet off the ground, about four metres off the ground, the top of it. There we go. Here's the pole. Look, you can just see it in the middle of that tree on the right-hand side there, and the wire coming down. And then that comes out in the same way as the other one, back out towards us a little bit. Here we go. To an insulator, which is a shed uh, roof height, about seven feet, just over two metres off the ground. And then tuning-wise... When you originally put it up with the two 10 meter, 33 foot legs each, about 6.8 megahertz, that was a bit long, trimmed it twice, took 70 centimeters off both legs, just over two feet off both legs, until we eventually got a tune uh, at around, uh, here we go, 7.1 and 7.15, we'll see in the second, both at 1.5 to 1. As the antenna is so low to the ground, that's what happens with dipoles. So you might think the antenna is only 25 feet above the ground at the top, goes down to six feet off the ground, so that's eight metres down to two metres. You think, well, that can't be a very good antenna, it's not very high. Well, the thing is, for 40 metres, 60 metres, 80 metres, and 160 metres, I mean, not many of us can get those antennas up half wavelength above the ground. Even at 40 metres, I've got to get it up 60 feet. Well, you know, which is 20 metres high, isn't it? Something like that. Well, I haven't got the space to do that. I haven't got a, I haven't got a big tree. I haven't got a big tower. So don't worry. I mean, the 40 metre dipole, whether it's 15, 20, 25, 30 feet above the ground. And don't forget, I've got, I've got the highest point where most of the current will grow out anyway. So that's, that's, the, that's the important bit with the dipole. Get the centre part, the first half or two thirds of each leg as high in the clear as you can. It'll do just fine for you. But I know a dipole of that sort of height on 40 metres would be absolutely fine um, when we got really short skip propagation, or in Britain we call it into G for about 50 to a couple of hundred miles. And in normal conditions, if you like, around Europe, a thousand, two thousand miles, it'll do absolutely fine because it'll shove a lot of its RF straight up. It'll refract down pretty, pretty steeply into that sort of thousand miles sort of footprint. It'll do absolutely fine. And because it's fairly low to the ground and inverted V, it's relatively omnidirectional so it's it's a decent little antenna really and that's what i want it for i want it for that fairly short sort of hop and it'll do pretty nicely for that roger roger also five by nine fifty nine qsl Well, thank you for watching. If you want to click subscribe for the channel, by the way, then I'll put a little link here. And there'll be another video coming up over here for you to look at. Take care. And if you're putting up a 40 metre dipole or having a go at it for the first time, any antenna, in fact, on HF, I hope you enjoy. Bye bye now.